G'day ice cream lovers, Steve Christensen's my name, the ice cream bloke, best-selling author by the way, I don't know whether you knew that. Uh, Hopelesstohero.com is a book that I wrote about employees, having to get the best out of employees. Um, I'll put a link down here in the description, but I wasn't really planning to say that, it just popped into my mind. Um, but headmaster of Scoop School down here, self-appointed, and I did want to talk today about the three different types of ice creams that you must have at your ice cream business. Before I jump into that, I do want to thank our episode sponsor, which is Sterachine. Sterachine, let's focus up there, lads. There we go. Sterachine is a product that sanitizes and cleans your ice cream machines. They get rid of milkstone, which is one of the things you do not want to have build up on your hoppers or your freezing cylinders. Look, the crew there at Purdy Products I know all about Milkstone, they know all about obviously this product here, Sterachine, uh, sanitizing, cleans your machines. I definitely would talk to them. Uh, you can either Google Sterachine or go to purdyproducts.com. The link will be down here below, won't it Matthew? Matthew's doing all of our video editing now. So anyway, <laughs> I do want to talk to you about the three different types of ice cream that you need to sell at your store. Now, I'm not talking about flavors, I'm not talking about categories of, say, premium or non-dairy. I'm talking about the types of ice cream. You see, there are three different types that most stores have that will kind of come into one of these three categories. The first one is uh, your signature products. The second one is your uh, tried and true favorites or traditional products or your spin on traditional. And the third is your hook flavors. So let's break them down. So the first product, the first category that you want to have is your signature product. Now that needs to be something that is proprietarily yours. So when people come to the ice cream case or the display cabinet and they're looking in there and they say, oh, this looks really good, uh, where do I start? You always want to start someone off with your signature product. So something that you're basically laying the foundation for. If you walk into a gelato store or a gelateria uh, and basically say, where do I start? It's always pistachio. And the reason why that is, is because if the pistachio is good, then everything is good. And you can say that about the signature flavor in your store. Now you can have one, two, or three, but they need to be uniquely yours. It doesn't mean to say that they are a flavor that nobody's heard of. It just means that this is something that's very specific to you. Now, in all of our stores, both here in the US and in Australia, our signature flavor was a black raspberry cheesecake. It was a white base with cheesecake base or flavor in it, uh, with a ribbon or a variegate of black raspberry puree, and then crumbled up graham crackers. Had the look, the feel, and the taste of a black raspberry cheesecake. So when everyone ever came to the store and said, where do I start? Where do I start with here? Here's a spoon. Uh, start with our black raspberry cheesecake and most people it just blew their mind so having two or three signature products that you call your signature products can be the foundation for everything else if your signature products are great then everything's great I will tell you though that having two or three signature products means that if someone doesn't like the cheesecake or doesn't like cheesecake in general then you can move on to something else like our butter pecan as our signature product. Again, doesn't need to be exactly unique, but it needs to be something that you're laying the foundation of all of your flavors on. The second will be your, basically your tried and true favorites, your traditional flavors, or what I call your spin on traditional. And I'll tell you what that is. So for example, mint Oreo was always a really big seller in our stores. But for me, I felt like Mint Oreo was also being sold in many other stores around our town. So I used to use warmed up hard shell chocolate and I used to make a ribbon of hard shell crunchy chocolate in our Mint Oreo and we would call it a Mint Oreo Crisp. So again, it was a tried and true favorite that people would kind of look at in the case and go, oh, Mint Oreo, I'll have one of them. But it was something that was a little bit different because we added uh, a flavor profile or some sort of consistency to it that kind of elevated it and made it uniquely ours. So uh, the interesting thing is that often when you have a signature flavor and it's important to have the signature flavors, when I used to say, uh, here, would you like to try this black raspberry puree? Uh, they would say, wow, this tastes great. Can I have two scoops of vanilla, one scoop of chocolate? So people are always going to lend themselves or lean back towards those traditional 
ice cream flavors. If you can have them, but just kind of tweak them a little bit to make them uniquely yours, very important. And the last type of flavor that you want is what we call your hook flavors. Now you may not have a lot of containers here, you may not even have one. This might be something that you keep in a bucket out the back. But it's that really strange, unique flavor that really piques people's interest and gets them coming back in. So for example, um, I think it's July is uh, National Cucumber Month. And so what we used to do was make a cucumber and mint sorbet every July. No one ever bought scoops and scoops and scoops of it. No one ever bought three scoops at a time, I think. But when we used to advertise it and promote it on Facebook, social media, Twitter, uh, the whole gamut, our outboard sign, hey, try and come in and try one of our uh, cucumber and mint sorbets, we would find that people would just be fascinated with, I wonder what this tastes like. So they'd come in, try the uh, cucumber and mint sorbet, wow, that's really good. And I have two scoops of vanilla, one scoop of the uh, mint chocolate crisp. So they're the three types of flavors. They all can play a role in the case and I'll tell you, you can kind of determine what percentage of them there will be. I would say that out of, let's say, a 20 pan case or a 20 bucket case, you'll probably want to have three or four uh, that will be your signature flavors. The rest, bar maybe one, uh, will be your traditional or your spin on traditional. And the last one, if it's even in the case, you may want to have it again, at the kind of secret menu item, uh, will be your hook flavor. Have a look at your case, see what you uh, have and what you could categorize into those three categories. Again, uh, it's really important that you keep bedazzling your customers with this variety that happens. Being traditional, being unique, and being signature. Uh, that's all we have for this video. Thanks for tuning in. Again, we want to thank our episode sponsor, which is Purdy Products, maker of Sterachine. Any information you need about the ice cream business, come to a class, get some consulting, scoopschool.com. Keep on scooping and we'll see you in the next video.